First thing I want to say is, you guys have been too busy. I haven't seen you in Beverly Hills. You well, gotta come back out now and then. Jess, anyway, Flair, you made it all possible that day you strolled out of the comfort zone of that nursing home. You could have sat back and watched the Horseman legacy live in infamy, but no, you let the Alzheimer's get the best of you. And now, courtesy of Barry Windham and the team of the 90s, we, right here on this program, next week, are going to debunk the Horseman myth once and for all. Get ready for lights, camera, traction. What do you mean? You know, Shivani, a lot of people seem to think that the Hollywood blondes are just a couple of loudmouth punks. So what I have to say tonight comes straight from the heart. Owen Anderson, you're a fat pig. You totally disgust me. Ric Flair, you're a withered up old man, and your glory days are long gone. What's the other guy's name? Roma. You're a complete idiot because no one, no one in the right mind would put themselves in the position that you have. But don't get me wrong, Shivani. I do respect what ability they do have. But let's face it, when push comes to shove, a fat man, an old man, and an idiot don't stand a chance against the Hollywood Bloods. And at that, I have no further comment. <laughs> Your brush with greatness is over. See you, Next week, a six-man tag. Oh, you gotta love them, don't you? Flair, <laughs> Roma, and Arn Anderson against the Hollywood Blondes and Barry Windham. It'll be our main event next week, and we are out of time. Go Vocabulary too. Uh, I've been hitting the distant edition. It's all brand, brand new. new. Yeah. You're through. I'm in the planetary uh, like Doctor Who. Who, who. So who? Fuck your beef. No relief. I step on stage. Girls scream like I'm Keith. Everybody, what's going on? Ringtime Pro Wrestling does it again. Keith and Keisha in the building. Keisha, say what's up to everybody. After a very um interesting week. Uh, I, I just want to say, hey, people, how are y'all doing? Because I'm all right. <laughs> I mean, that's the best way to be to describe my mood right now. Um, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Uh, this show is going to be a loaded show. Um, I'm going to start it off as saying Merry Christmas because uh, we will not talk to you till after Christmas. So we go stuff this one in your stocking. Uh, next That's week, right. the year in review, best of 2017. Um, email us your thoughts, email us your matches. Uh, you can hit us uh, at kholt at ringtimeprowrestling dot com. You can hit us on the Twitter at ringtime podcast. Uh, you know Keisha's Twitter handle really no Keish. Um, at K Hope Jr. You can tweet right. us uh, if you are on Facebook. Join the Facebook group or uh, like the Facebook fan page. Either or, and uh, give us some 2017 stuff. Um, we will be talking about 2017. We will talk about some of the things from most most of the relevant promotions. Um, of course, everything is going to be WWE heavy, but of course, we're going to talk a lot of New Japan. Um, depending on how the dates land, the Wrestle Kingdom preview will be sometime next week. Also, um, we, that might just be a separate show. Uh, but yes, we will we will be previewing Wrestle Kingdom. Um, I think we've done pretty much a successful preview for the last two or three years of Wrestle Kingdom. Um, ever since ten, I think we've been kind of on it. Um, it's like my yearly thing. I'm up at 3 o'clock in the morning and Keish, thanks to this app on the Fire Stick, I ain't got to like go through the trouble of jigging up the laptop through the HDMI cord. <laughs> and then, like, you know, I got, I'm at home. I got to borrow a second laptop. So I got, you know, fortunately it's 3 o'clock in the All morning. Right. So, you know, people sleep. So you can just grab theirs. And then, you know, you hook it up because I still got to be able to be able to communicate because I need to be live and... 
some stuff I don't like to do because I'm still typing. I'm kind of taking notes and all that. And it's it's a lot of work. Yeah, right. it's a lot of work because it's. But I love it. Like it's one of those things that reinvigorated my love for wrestling. Was that getting up and being a part of it with people who um, a lot of American fans who get up at that time to partake in the second biggest wrestling event of the year, right? In the United States, because if you were Japan, it's the biggest rest of it. And by far, the Tokyo Dome shows are like 60,000. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be nuts. And this year, Alpha versus Omega, Keish. Yeah, yeah. I get yeah. Okada and Naito are going to be the main event. But I think in wrestling, sometimes we forget. I don't want to confuse the main event with the last match. Because a lot of times I think I've done that. Like, I'm like, okay, well, that, why was that the main event? Well, hey, man, this, I clearly could tell you what the main event is. And the main event is, is Jericho and Omega. Um, Omega's probably one right. of the biggest stars that this company has. And Jericho is an all time great, right? And He's Chris Jericho. It's gonna be classic Jericho. He 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 don't let the hair grow out, so it's 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 gonna be classic Jericho. You know what I'm saying? Um, And I got a stink of suspicion that he's gonna be in the Royal Rumble like two weeks later. Right. So, and I mean, it'll give you that same feeling that you saw uh, about two two years ago now uh, when you watched. Russell Kingdom, and you saw the Shinsei Nakamura AJ Styles match for the uh, IWGP Intercontinental Title, and then AJ was at Royal Rumble. He was like, "Oh well, shit!" And then hell, three months later, you saw the the, the video for Nakamura. There's gonna be an NXT takeover. You was like, "It is going down." Mm-hmm. Um, but. Yeah, so I I'm very excited about Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of good matches. Um, I like the way they built their cards. Um, I'm excited to see the Young Bucks and Rapaki 3K go at it. Uh, I'm excited to see the main event. Like I I want to know is like Okada's. Rain gonna end, man. Okada is on this rain that's like almost two years now. Like he's carrying that belt, mm. and he's he's the standard mm. bearer. Like the guys mm. are really, really doing it. And it's when PWI put him as the number one wrestler in the world. I was like, holy! I, I, I've never seen like a just. I've seen guys who were in Japan get ranked high and even never them got number one like Americans the guy Jinx never got number one but mm-hmm. see I'm trying to act cool like I know about Japanese stuff but uh, I've never seen like a Japanese wrestler who primarily whose his work is in Japan get that but hey man it's a reason why he was able to sell out tickets on the west coast when uh, New Japan comes came over so all that being said uh, we're going to have some fun today uh, I'm going to take the show down a little bit for a second and then we're going to pick it back up with some jokes and some fun and then we're actually going to get into the wrestling so let's start with the down uh, this week we lost a pioneer in podcasting um, Reggie Osei better known to most of y'all as Combat Jack uh, passed away uh, it was a battle with colon cancer, which I think we found out earlier this year that he had cancer, and he kind of announced it on one of his shows. It kind of let us know he was going through treatment. Uh, he started missing shows down the stretch, but uh, apparently he has succumbed to that battle. Uh, on a personal note, uh, I think this this guy did a lot for not just podcasting but the hip hop community. Uh, for those of you who don't know Reggie's background, he was a lawyer. Uh, he worked uh, with Rockefeller 
a lot. Actually, brokered that the reasonable doubt deal that they had uh, with Dame and Jay. The guy uh, got out of entertainment law, and then he found a new life and a new passion in the podcasting. And uh, he brought a lot of stories to life. Uh, one of the things that was fun, he was very accessible via the social media, especially to people in the podcast game. Um, and it was funny because I would tweet him a lot. When there were stories that would come about, uh, for those of you who don't know my background, um, I used to work in the record business. And there would be stories from rappers about stuff that happened when I was in the business that I never knew the full story about. You know what I mean? And I would always mm-hmm. hear them about the episodes or whatever because I was. It was always, it was always cool to take a rewind and then kind of like see it all from a different perspective because then you hearing it, then you remember what you heard back then. Just a lot going on, but um, yeah, man. I mean, dude was a great talent, um, a straight up stand up guy, and um, podcasting uh, was much better by his presence. The guy really pushed the pendulum forward and uh, you know showed. A lot of us that this was a viable thing Like you could really do something with this Like it could Be a career You know what I'm saying Not just, I mean it's a hobby But it also could be something else bigger And you know He he always had a say at the end of the show At the end of the show um, uh, Dream those dreams Cause life flows and technicolor uh, I, I don't mess it up But It was something That like You know A good affirmation To Use it mm-hmm. But anyway um, So yeah That's our Down moment Um, So With that We always like to have fun So With fun uh, We're gonna talk about The thing that had us laughing Before the show uh, And for those of you Who were under a rock uh, the world's busiest airport is here in Atlanta, and apparently it lost power. Like, the whole airport <laughs> lost power. Now, that is always a fun time, because that always leaves time for people to clown Atlanta, because we find ways to screw up things that are on a massive level. And uh, apparently, an airport without power can turn... Uh, the inhabitants into an episode of The Walking Dead. Uh, Look, let me tell you something. <laughs> because we have a correspondent who may or may not work for the airport or work at the airport. <laughs> I'm going to defer and ask somebody who was actually there. Did it turn to an episode of The Walking Dead? <laughs> Look, there was no walking zombies and all that BS going on, okay? It was not that serious. Um, Now, here's the thing. I say that, but of course, it was that serious. Let's be real, okay? Um, You're, you're, you're working, or you're not, you know, you're just there. I Whatever, okay? I'll put it to you like this. You're a passenger. You're standing at checkpoint. You're waiting to go through PSA. You know, you, you're playing around on your phone. You're talking to your, your spouse or whatever and everything. And then, bam, the lights go out. Now, you, you're, it's not completely dark because there's emergency lights, of course. But the, the, dark, the lights are out. You're at the world's busiest airport. It is hundreds of people standing around you. And the lights go out. So you would think, oh, well, you know, what the hell? You know, that's the first thought. And then the second thought is, well, you know, some people would think this. I don't know if everybody would, but eh, the lights come back on in a second, you know, whatever. But it never happens. Um, One minutes go by. An hour goes by. Two hours go by. Four hours go by. <laughs> and it's still dark. Um, so now at this point, you're being exited out of the airport. And you're like, what the hell? Like, I was literally two steps away from my flight. That ain't happening today. 
um, this was the reality for a lot of people that were at the airport when this happened. This was Sunday. For those of you that don't know, this was Sunday. It was a, it was a little after one, and it literally, if for if if y'all want a, a picture. Everywhere from domestic to international, like the whole airport just went black. Now, it wasn't pitch dark. Some people wanted to, I'm going to put that out there. Now, it wasn't pitch dark. Folks want to describe it as it was like like the darkest of dark. It was really not that serious. Because, <laughs> of course, there's still windows to the airport, so... Of course, there's still light coming in, and then there's emergency lights. So you can't be the world's busiest busiest airport and not have emergency lights. That's not how this works. So um, it wasn't like total darkness. Um, Not only that, but of course, with an event like this brings on social media. So you got people on their phones, Facebook Live and Instagram Live and Snapchatting and, you know, all of that. And it slowed down <clears throat> uh, cell phone towers. Like, it so slowed down uh, um, cell phones around. Around people's cell phones were cutting out and all this kind of stuff because everybody hopped on there is trying to report the story. Um, then you had, of course, the new station come in and they did their stuff. They really did. They really did. And it was funny because walking through, you would hear people say things like, um, like, oh my God, it's an apocalypse. And it's just, it was ridiculous. <laughs> it's the apocalypse. And, oh man, it looks like the walking dead around here. Like, it was ridiculous. <laughs> like, seriously. Like, I was just like, no. Now, had I heard somebody scream and then, like, say they were being attacked, I swear to you, I would have got the hell off. But that didn't happen. So, and and <clears throat> once everybody got through the chaos, it, and it, as, as much as people want to say, like, it was, like, complete chaos, I can honestly tell you it really wasn't. Um, there was no, like, people just running through the airport and, you know, running all over the place and ah, that didn't happen. Okay, that didn't happen. Um, it was actually really controlled for a situation like that it, with that amount of people. And and it wasn't like the the amount of people decreased. It really didn't. Like um, there was still people showing up to the airport, of course, because they don't know what's going on. They get to the terminal, they get dropped off, they get out the car. And they look inside. It's two o'clock in the afternoon, and it's dark. Like they're looking inside and seeing that it's dark, and you're know, like, "What the hell?" You know. So every all the um, ticket counters for the airlines and all that, they had to tell them, "Like, look, we don't have any power." You know. Um, so it was situations that had to be uh, taken care of, and things like that but at the end of the day um it was uh it was an unfortunate situation let's put it like that it's never happened before ever anywhere this has never happened before so um this was a new and and I hated that Atlanta had to be the guinea pig for this type of situation um, because of course you you talk about these kind of things, but you don't really expect them to actually happen. You no, know, no, you don't. Um, because it's it's not like there was some kind of natural disaster that came in and wiped out half the airport. Like it was, it was it was raining. Now, I give it that, but that is definitely not the cause of this. Um, on, hold on, Lord, is a fire. Okay, sorry. right. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time. At the time, um, there it was. I mean, there was just really no reason to like run all over the place. Oh my god! Oh my god. It, it really just no. Like that's not no. That didn't happen. You know, people of course were questioning it because imagine getting off your flight and you get off the plane and you go through the door and you get to the concourse and it's dark. 
you're in the middle of the world's busiest airport and it's dark and you're like what the hell so you come out the baggage claim and it's dark um oh by the way they were reporting this on the news so I guess I throw it out there too um there are still 1500 pieces of luggage that need to be claimed from Delta so if you don't have your luggage you can it's a number to call um just call Delta get online call Delta it's customer service they can take get you in touch with them so you get your luggage okay this question. is not a joke <laughs> I am so serious <laughs> so question yeah, this luggage so does it go goes unclaimed for a while right Will it be right. like an episode of Storage Wars where I can come up there and be it? Look, on, Keith, on I'm not doing what you yeah. like, <laughs> you know This is not. That is definitely not how this. Works. I'm just saying. And cause... No, they are not going to have luggage laid out in the middle of the terminal for people I, to bid on. Like that's just I not. I feel gonna... like I feel like a come up is possible. That's all I'm saying. Like I feel no. like I can show up. You've been up fuck around and got that one bag, right? With. With all the like, laptops, like uh, I just feel like right, right. <laughs> oh, no, like I am not. No, that's not how this works. I'm pretty sure that is definitely not how this works. So, or but hey, yeah. man, if you don't left your luggage there that long, I feel like I can roll up and put a claim on your bag, and they probably should just let me have it. So I'm not. Keith, shut up. <laughs> no, that's not. They I'm are saying, not. <laughs> hey, who? Because if that's the case, then they just gonna stand there and they're gonna be like, "Hey, you want some luggage?" Like, nigga, no. Like, that's no, not. Look, it's luggage claim. Whoever show up to claim it, that you get rid of no. fifteen hundred bags. I tell you right now, I roll out with like two bags and be trying to figure it out. <laughs> but like I said, they don't want it. <laughs> shut up. Um, Somebody called oh, us some J's. And, and and just to paint a picture of the next day, um, the line at the rental car center was outrageous. I have never in my life seen the rental car center that sad, that 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 crazy. Um, for those of you that haven't been to Atlanta's airport, um, their rental car center is. It's on. It's near airport property, but it's it's a little separated. It's a little ways off. So um, it's actually on airport property. It's just kind of a little ways. Um, it's not inside the airport, so you can't just walk out from your from baggage claim and then like you, the where the car center is like right there. Like you have to actually take SkyTrain over. And the line at the rental car center was ridiculous. Like, it was the longest line I've ever seen in my life for rental cars. Um, As someone who's been stuck at an airport, <laughs> the worst thing in the world yeah. was giving up my rental car before I knew yeah, like, that my flight it, wasn't it, taking off. And, he, and here is it's a 24-7. The rental car center is a 24-7 operation. Like, you can literally go get a rental car at 3 in the morning. Like, it's... It's a it's a twenty four seven operation. Um, I don't know how it is at any at any other airports or whatnot, but I know here that's how this works. So that's how the one here works. So yeah, like the lines were like ridiculously stupid, and it was like, oh my god. Um, hotels were doing the most because some of them were mm-hmm. price gouging and doubling their prices, and it was because it, there was hotels that were sold out. Like right. the Western was sold out. You know why? Because they knew the airlines had vouchers. But that's that's a whole nother yeah. Story. Um, but but the crazy part about that part is the airlines couldn't give vouchers um, unless they were doing it electronically, and they and it came from like the airline itself. Um, the airlines couldn't give vouchers because the computers weren't up because the power was out. That's usually how they get vouchers. At, at they usually print them out, like at the ticket counter or the gate, and they give them to the passengers, and they be on the sit them on their way. That did not happen Sunday because the power was out. Unless you were there when they got the power back up, and I think that was about. Don't quote me on this, but I think that was probably about 
10, 11 o'clock that night. So, yeah. Um, all right. So, world's busiest airport. We are 25 minutes deep. Um, mm-hmm. we haven't touched any hardcore wrestling. And I'm not about to jump on it just yet because Keisha, you know what headline I just read? Catavius Caldwell Pope still serving, still playing for the Lakers while serving a jail sentence. I said, what? What? Hold on. Time out. How does that work? All right. I'll tell you. How so, does that work? Is he going to jail on the weekends? Yeah. Hey, man, I heard people do that shit. And I okay. was like, what kind of shit is this? Like, they okay. set this up for real? I, I'll tell you a story. Off here, somebody you know very well went to weekend jail for a little while. Um, and I, I'll leave it at that. But yeah, that, that person did go to weekend jail. Usually weekend jail means you had a DUI. Um, but I will go, let's go into this. Uh, yeah, co- serving jail sentence, you say. Uh, but, but hey, man, didn't I just see him play 41 minutes of overtime, lost to the Gold State Warriors? Yes and yes. Um <laughs> L.A. authorities granted Caldwell Pope permission last week to serve his 25-day uh, sentence stemming from a March arrest on suspicion of driving under the influence and a subsequent probation violation in the Seal Beach Detention Center's work release program. Now, some of y'all may say, but that Negro play basketball. I'm going to say basketball is his job. So if he's going to be on work release, he can go on work release to play basketball. It just sounds right. absurd when you say it. Uh, yeah, it does. Is reportedly allowed to participate in practices and home games, but not permitted to travel outside the state of California, which explains his absence from Wednesday night win over the Rockets in Houston. He is expected to play against the Warriors in Oakland on Friday and must wear a GPS body device when leaving the facility and submit to a breathalyzer upon returning. Okay, I'm going to wow. say this because this is the funniest. Now they say upon leaving. Because I'm like, is he going to be out there hooping at an ankle bracelet? Because there is nothing funnier than the prospect of an NBA player out there balling right. in an ankle bracelet. Because look. That is the skeptical of the day. Like, I, they seen, wouldn't have the cameras all on that nigga. Yeah, like, but I feel like being rich has gotten him out of actually having to wear it during the game. Because it's kept. Right. Geez, I've seen. I've hooped with dudes who had ankle bracelets on, but it was at the Y. You know what I mean? Or it was, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was at Murphy Park. Like, it wasn't at... So, it just, I'm just saying, it, it, it happens. But I, I, to see it in an NBA game, to me, would take it to another level. A man who makes $18 billion out there balling in an ankle bracelet. But apparently he had a DUI in Detroit. Did, I guess he violated probation, missed some time. But according to court records, Caldwell Pope missed several drug tests and screenings, and that's why he ended up in trouble. Uh, somebody, the Times, conducted an investigation. They said he is at the Seal Beach Detention Center, a so-called pay-to-stay jail that allegedly caters to mostly rich offenders in L.A. What? In Orange County who are, serving a uh, who are serving DUI-related charges. Pope will reportedly play $120 a day to stay at the facility. They have a premium jail for people who, who do DUIs. That's so ridiculous. That is and, every level of jail. ridiculous. This is the level of balling. First of all, I don't know what $120 a day gets you in the world of jails. But I'm assuming that it's a little bit better than just three hots in a cot. I feel right. like this place has a chef. I feel like also that uh, 120 dollars a day for people who make 18 billion dollars, that facility is still a downgrade for what they used to. Now, for somebody who makes 120 dollars a day, probably in life, uh, it is an upgrade to the facility that I can. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I probably make more than 120 dollars a day, but uh, uh, just the point, right? Not much more. Not seen. Anyway, I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Keish. Hundred twenty dollars a day. Um, but they know it as a pay to stay jail. So apparently, that is so ridiculous. Like when rich people behave badly. Fuck? But that lets you know how much how many rich people stay in a given area where they like look. 
we got enough of an economy to be able to support a facility. That's mainly for people who are well to do. That's fucking up. All right. So, hey, have at it. But all right. So, Clash of Champions went down Sunday, Keish. Um, we're gonna go through the matches. I'll tell you, there was a pre-show match. Mojo took on Zack Ryder. Mojo won. Um, I am still not sold on Mojo. Yeah, I actually saw that match, and I was kind of like, eh. <laughs> that was it, man. Yeah. Um, also, WWE, they got some new backstage reporters. And you know, um, they always have, like, interviewer? random. I, mean, I was like, who does light skin girl? <laughs> well, hey, man. Right? Like, you can't be stupid up here. I mean, I need, I need a fax. Like, I need some. I need a report sent to me when this kind of stuff happens. And you know what? Um, you know, I need a scouting report. Just say yeah. Right. Um, yeah, who are you? But um, yeah, that went down. Dolph Ziggler, Keish, uh, defeated Bobby mm-hmm. Roode and Baron Corbin to be the new United States champion. I did not expect this. I expected Dolph yeah. Ziggler matches to go generally how Dolph Ziggler matches go. Right. Yeah, Which usually was with Dolph Ziggler not, not winning. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, Dolph has got some gold again. Yeah. Um, that was a little dark how he came out. It was, it was all you hear is his music here and they just cut that shit and he just walked out like, oh, wait, wait, damn. Dolph, yeah, like you his, gotta be like that. Yeah, his interest should be just called cut the shit. Um. Yeah. But yeah, solid match, entertaining. Um. We'll see what happens because uh, after watching SmackDown, I'm kind of like, I was kind of confused. But we'll see how it all lays mm-hmm. out later. Uh, the Usos retained their tag team championships in a fatal four way that saw Rusev, Ada English, The New Day, and Gable and Benjamin. Uh, I'll say this. They pulled that match off better than I expected. Right, but I was still confused at why they were tagging in and out. Like, I was okay. like, what the fuck is the point in this shit? This is how they had it set up. It was a fatal four-way. With four right. teams being represented at all times. Now, I've seen fatal four-ways done with tag teams before. And then what they'll do is they'll have two guys in the ring, and you can tag out to any person that's outside the ring. Right. Well, Seth Laws is like, you can't tag in like two teammates to beat each other up because that ain't going to work. But you can tag out to anybody around. So this way they set up, it was four people in the ring at all time, but you could tag out to your partner, your specific tag team partner. I said specific, like the ocean, specific. <laughs> if you don't put that S on there, Keisha, you talk about ocean. And it sounds <laughs> retarded. Right. Uh, but you could tag out to your specific partner and uh, make that work. Now, I to me, with a fatal four way in a tag match, I feel like it should just be tornado. What is tornado? Yeah, tornado see. is just everybody in the ring and let it go. Uh, I think. Yeah. They, see, I was saying this. I was saying the same thing. I said the same thing. I was like, "Why is this not tornado?" Because it ain't. That's how it's operating anyway. So I'm just like, "What the hell?" I think it was a television production decision, and they felt like it would probably would be easier to shoot the match and more organized if they kept it primarily in the ring. And primarily, you know, like this visual aspect. Because we'll think about tornado, and you have eight competitors. The action is going everywhere, right? So you can have people in the ring, you got people outside the ring, people here and here, and you might miss something trying to uh, accommodate all the camera angles and you know the different subplots of people going in their different directions. Um, it's protective for the new day, also in this um, fatal four way format. Because one thing I don't like about the new day. Uh, is having a three man advantage that doesn't have a three man advantage, but because since they've been baby faces, uh, the third person is always just like a cheerleader. 
I'll say they what they they've done better since they've been baby faces though is now that there's a ro- there's more of a rotation, right? So, right. I I'm not a hundred percent sure which new day lineup is going to go. Even at a pay per view, because generally, like okay, there was a table SmackDown where maybe you can have the Xavier Woods line up, but they're like okay, we know what the A team is, right? The A lineup is Kofi and Biggie with Xavier outside, right? But there's the speed lineup with Xavier and Kofi. That's what I would call it. And then there's like the other lineup where there's just Xavier and Big E, and I don't know what that really does. You know what I mean? I guess it's kind of interchangeable to Kofi, Big E lineup, but Kofi is more versatile. I mean, I mean, just time and what he's done, and I, we assume Kofi's the better, mm-hmm. the better, right? So that's why that's the A lineup, and that was when they was running for the most part during the earlier part of they big, you know. Their success, right? Uh, but now, so when they've been babyface, you start to see them mixing up the lineup more. But the problem is, is that that third person just becomes dull and void. They're just a cheerleader. Where like, hey man, I think my exposure and how I learned Freebird rule tag teams were watching the Freebirds and then Demolition right. later. Um, teams that are cheap, so. <laughs> Having that third man was an advantage because these teams they they go cheat, right? But watching it with a babyface team for this long, I just been kind of like, uh, it's okay. And I say, I'm just saying, having that third man, hey man, what's up? Go haywire outside the ring, and then you get chin checked, and then you don't retaliate or don't get back involved. It's kind of like, hey man, you too goody two shoes for your old good. <laughs> right. Like, oh, he's still nursing his chin. Chin my ass. You gonna fight me like an adult. But that's neither here nor there. Uh Charlotte Flair retains her ta- her uh women's title in a lumberjack match uh against Natalia. Uh she beat Natalia via submission. Uh Keish, I'm gonna say this is one of the worst lumberjack matches of all time. Uh, yeah, it was awful. Not, the match itself was good. Those two are great competitors who I think should always be highlighted and, you know, all that good stuff. The problem was is that the Lumberjacks turned into one Lumberjack, one Babyface Lumberjack, and seven heel Lumberjacks. Right. It, it just kind of... Yeah. I was like, oh, this is stupid. What, the and what was of, crazy of, was... <sighs> They like, they were beaten on each other and Charlotte. Like what the hell? Yeah, well, that that kind of saved it, right? Because that that tension allows Charlotte to be, to make her move. So like, you get that okay. The welcoming committee are heels still, but they hate the riot squad. All right. So so they can rock with that and they can fight the riot squad but still be kind of heelish in how they it, interact. Um that whew. it was funny too because like Natalia basically just turned her back on everybody. She like shit. This was gonna help me get my belt. Hey ladies, how y'all doing? Right. <laughs> exactly. Um she can't shoot the land. Oh, <laughs> also but Watching the Becky Lynch getting beat up, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, which she'll be back probably for what we'll talk about later. Uh, Keish, she's out for injury, and that's like the most uncomfortable video to watch when they replay it. Yeah, and I'll tell you why, because they do a lot of kicks to the stomach, and they got her holding her stomach, and it's like, ugh, I don't know, I don't think the optics of this, y'all didn't think this through. Like having a woman right. go, go get beat up and jumped, and uh, y'all like doing a lot of hits to the stomach and have her hold her stomach because it's kind of like, did y'all? Yeah, that's not okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. like y'all, y- y- y'all fucking with a line. I'm just saying. Uh, All right. The, the Bludgeon Brothers defeated Breeze Dago. I don't think that was anything that anybody questioned. Uh, Kevin Owens right. and Sammy Zayn defeat Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura. Kevin and Sammy ha- keep their jobs. Uh, Keish, I think we everybody knew how that match was going to go uh, because I mean you couldn't fire him, so 
It was gonna have to win some kind of way. And Daniel and Shane kept getting into it throughout the match, and it ended with Daniel putting the fast count. Right, like I was like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. I mean, and they walked out. Uh, Sami Zayn is still the most annoying man in the world. Uh, of course. Which also seconded by Leah. Leah. Leah agrees. Like I, and not even just agree. Like she brought it up to me when they watched SmackDown. She was like, "He is just so." Annoying. And I'm like, I agree. <laughs> You know, a lot of people. Move, I I can't stand him. I like it. Just it's really annoying. Like that face. Like it's just so. Like oh wow, man. If I could kick you in your chin, like right. like I would. And that's uh, you know. But I guess that's what a good heel does. But yeah. Uh, so that that leads to an aftermath. AJ Styles uh, successfully defended his WWE Championship against Jinder Mahal. It's only one title change night, ch- change hands at Night of Champions. All of the champions retained. But yeah, AJ Styles defeated yeah, Jinder in a very solid match. Uh, I'm gonna award match of the night to the tag team match, but a uh, very solid, yeah. solid match of the evening. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much class of the champions, Keish. Um. I guess we'll roll downhill and talk raw, and then we'll break, and then we'll finish up with the news, birthdays, and SmackDown, and uh, I guess whatever else we got going on in the streets. But uh, Brock Lesnar shows up on Raw, Keish. Uh, mm-hmm. Kurt Angle wants to announce who's going to be the number one contender for the Universal title, and uh, Strowman and Kane both showed up, and then Brock showed up, and then Kurt Angle made the most, like, you forgot he was a wrestler kind of announcement to announce the match like hey yeah, uh, yeah the match is going to be a triple threat I'm getting the fuck out of here like that's kind of how right. that went <laughs> at least that's how I interpret what I watched I was like yeah it's going to be a triple threat fuck y'all and I'm out uh, yeah. right. <laughs> no no key because yeah. you have to be honest with everybody and yourself and because I'll be honest with myself if I was him, I would do the exact same I thing. I fully acknowledge I was like, it was a business decision. Like, I fully acknowledge yeah. it. <laughs> that, hey, man, he realized, he did the math and realized the situation. And it was like, yeah, um, I'm going to get out of here before y'all start breaking shit. And right. I don't blame exactly. him. I, I don't blame him. But at the same time, I'd, I'd be less than an honorable journalist if I not bring up the point. Like he said, I got to get up out of here. So, <laughs> I would be Kurt was looking around like, bro, I am not going to get into right. this shit. Yeah, no, he, he, it was one of them like, they don't pay me enough for this. And he left. Right. Um, Brock looked brockish. Uh Take it, strobe it out, and then hit K with an F five. That was a little awkward because I guess K forgot how to get up there. But uh, right, and then you know everybody sits up. Everybody still looks dominant at the end, and everybody looks scary. Um, I'm gonna say this: this match severely alters the Royal Rumble. And what I mean by that is this, and maybe not because I I suspect that somebody might do double duty. Right. right. But if they do not think about it like this, two of the people that you could favor or that you think would have a significant impact on the Royal Rumble will not be in the match. That is Kane and Strowman. So, yeah, I. Is Roman Reigns going with the Royal Rumble? I mean, just just just, just hold Man, on. Look. Hold on just hold on to it. Hey, what he at anyway? I don't know. Like, I, they'd explain like, was he on vacation? Did, you know, because, hey, man, some people put their time off in at a weird time. I don't know. Cause yeah, because he is in a kind of champion. So I'm like, yeah, uh, but hey, man, it's the holidays. Sorry. I get it. Because you know, the funny thing is that raw like two weeks ago that we watched where they was just kind of throwing batches together. That was the one that seemed like, hey man, this is the this is the week where everybody called off for work. Right. Exactly. 
they was like, nah, bro, I'm not coming in today. Yeah. I'll holler at y'all later. <laughs> I'll holler at y'all later. Like, yeah. It was just too much. But. Yeah. Um, but that happened. Uh, Seth Rollins defeated Jason Jordan. Uh, with some boy Joe at ringside, which was a weird thing, but that's because it was supposed to be Rollins and Joe, and then Jordan came out and decided. I, that guy gets annoyed too. Like he, this better be like a big heel turn because this dude is annoying as shit. And yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Here's the thing. Here's the. I think he'd make a good heel. I think he is naturally like just a, a, a likable light skinned guy. Like he seems like just an annoying light skinned dude. So uh Oh my god. I think I think it'll work for him. You know, not all light skinned dudes are annoying, but he, he he seems like that type. Like he seems like the guy at work that'll tell on you. Um You the one who like forwarded an email to your boss on the slick, like, hey man. I think mm-hmm. he missed something yesterday. I think I think he's that kind of guy. <laughs> okay. Um, but that happened. <laughs> Been a CC in that CC that nigga real quick. Like, yeah. hey, you see this shit, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> Just uh, want to make sure you knew. <laughs> Finn Baylor and Hideo Tommy defeated the Mister Raj. Um, this is probably an Otami vehicle, so they can introduce him to the 205 Live audience and uh, boost his profile on 205 Live. I'm going to say, I was okay. I Like, if I never saw him wrestle, like, I really wouldn't have been, like, impressed. I would have been like, oh, shit. This dude missing moves right. and shit. Like, you don't know how to get people. Like, this, is, <laughs> this shit moving right. slow. Like, there was a lot of awkward moments in that. Uh Cedric Alexander defeated Drew Gulak to be the number one contender for the Cruiserweight title. Uh, I think everybody kind of knew how that was going to go. Oscar defeated Alicia Fox for the 18th week in a row. Right. Uh, the Bar and Samoa Joe uh, defeated The Shield and Jason Jordan because Jordan got into a match with uh, Ambrose and Rollins after. Uh, Basically, after you know the whole thing, debacle earlier in the show, uh, Ambrose uh, kind of got beat up during that match and suffered an injury. Um, where I th- he's going to be out for a significant amount of time, but we'll talk about that later in the show. Uh, woke back Hardy, put out a message, a special message about the battlefield. Uh, Elias announced he's going to enter the Royal Rumble. And the biggest, Yay! the biggest announcement of the show was done by Stephanie McMahon. It's probably the biggest announcement of the That's week. That's right. Uh, That's now, right. Now, Keish, with Page Crew and the Riot Squad both debuted, we was like, "Wow, that's like six extra people." Right. All right. Mhm. Mhm. What you said? So, you said what now? We said that, hey, this was possible, and this could be something down the road. We start reading right. articles where mm-hmm. people were like, uh, nah, man, they said they're not headed in that direction. If they was yeah, headed in that direction, they should have just said they were, because they were back then. And, like, they just come up with it now. But Stephanie announced there will be. The first ever women's Royal Rubble. Keisha, take it over. You, you, damn white, okay? The first ever women's Royal Rumble, people. Like, now, I don't know, I I haven't um, dived into details because I have, of course, seen videos and like things of like the de- like rumored details of how it's going to go, how many women it's going to be, how long it's going to be, you know that kind of thing. But it's going to be the first ever women's Royal Rumble, and I personally am excited because it's amazing. It should have been happened, but at the same time, I think that the the number of women in the main roster right now is is 
absolutely and I'm uh I'm uh it's it's amazing. Um I didn't really realize how many women are on each roster until like I started to kind of count out. You know, I'm like, man, especially with the added up absolution and the right spot like it's like, oh shit. <laughs> Because now you have three extra women on each show to mm-hmm. add on to the amount that was already there. So at the end of the day, and, and of course you see your main people on TV every week, but at the same time you forget there's like at least another two or three people in the back that haven't, that aren't doing, you know, out and out in the spotlight every week. You know what I'm saying? So they, of course they do the live shows and they, and they're there, but you don't see them on TV. Um, so I'm excited about it. I'm pretty sure that they're going to have, like, this is this is Keisha's predictions, of course, but I'm pretty sure, it, um, I think it's going to be the same um, time limit as the men, you know, what I, what I mean, what I mean is um, uh, how often they introduce the next wrestler. Um, but I think the difference in, I'm pretty sure because with battle royals with women, they have them throw them through the over the second rope. They have them throw them over the middle at the the uh, the middle rope as opposed to going over the top. Now with the Royal level, I'm pretty sure it might be a little different. I think they'll probably still have them throw them over the top. But of course, <laughs> most of the women that we're talking about at the tallest are like what, five five, so. Um, throwing over the top rope it's not necessarily difficult it's just it's going to be a bit of a challenge so <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that instead of having them throw over the top rope they're going to have them throw over the, the, the second rope and, and it still counts the same um, when we get into Smackdown later um, there's more about this story but at the same time, um, it is a phenomenal uh, addition to the history that's being made in women's wrestling um, right now. Because, um, of course, there's been a lot of firsts that have happened, and um, it's just keep adding on to the timeline, and I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it as a huge and extra strong advocate for women's wrestling like I am thoroughly excited about this entire situation and um, I can't wait to see it personally Um, all I ask all that I ask the WWE to do is to put this put the women's Royal Rumble right before the men that's it that's all I ask if you're not going to do it right before the men like have it in between do it closer to the because of course the Royal Rumble is the main event like it makes only makes sense to have it at the main event so um the Royal Rumble for the most part has been the main event um and I just ask that the women be right before them or at least two matches before make it close to the to them don't put them in a big... Please don't have the Women's Royal Rumble. First Royal Rumble ever. Right at the beginning of the show. I don't want to see that shit. Like, don't do not do that. Don't do my women like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one thing to have title matches at the beginning of shows. and That, that is, to me, is okay. I'm okay with that. Because, um, of course, it sets the tone for the rest of the show. But at the same time, no, I don't need my women, my first women's way Rumble to be at the very beginning of the show. My dad is not going to work for me. So, but I digress. Um, I'm excited about this. And, uh, Keith, I had actually, I think I read, I read somewhere that the Royal Rumble was kept a secret from, like, everybody. Like, I think the execs and, and all that, they knew that this is what they direction they wanted to go into and of course it had been rumored but you know nobody was for certain like this was actually going to happen but now it has been put out there to the universe so now we know this is actually going to happen 
Now all I need them to do is create women's tag team titles and I'm good to go. I'm just saying. Women's Royal Rumble. That's all that's it for me. I'm just okay. I'm excited about it. I right. mean how can you not be? Right. So, um, with that being said, we are going to roll into our break. Uh, we'll be back with my oh, my favorite stuff, birthdays and the news. Mm-hmm. And uh, that'll be that. And then uh, we'll we'll take it on home. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, I got taken out of my menu that I usually pull stuff from. But uh, well. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, we are going to hit y'all. We'll have time promo, and we'll be back. All right. I vividly recall the signing of the contract for your title shot at Hulk Hogan in WrestleMania 3. You said you taught Hogan a lot, but you had still one more lesson to give him in the final chapter in that big title match at the Silver Dome in Pontiac on the 29th. You want to talk to somebody? You talk to me. He's going to do all his talking in the ring. You talk to me. You want to talk about the final chapter? I'll be glad to talk about the final chapter. The final chapter in the life and history and the career of Hulk Hogan. See, because it's over, Hogan. I know it. You know it. Everybody knows it. You had three good years. You can't laugh at that. You were lucky. You made some money. You got a cartoon. You got some dolls. You rode good. You had it good. But you know you can't beat this man. Toughest man in the world. Nobody can beat this man. You think with all that blonde hair and a bunch of little hulksters out there and behind you, you ripping that t-shirt off and shaking in your pythons, you think you can beat him, dummy? It can't be done by you, ten guys like you, or a hundred people like you. This is the next heavyweight champion of the world. Get ready to swallow it, Hogan. It's all over. Andre, what about that that final lesson? You don't understand, do Wait you, dummy? I do the I'll talking. I'll conduct these interviews here if you don't mind. Oh, maybe I will conduct them. How do you like that? All right, uh... Today, the birthdays kind of interesting. So, uh, this, this show will drop on Friday. Uh, Luke Gallows will be celebrating the birthday today. Uh, Gallows turns 34. Well, yeah, 34. Um, tomorrow, Saturday, uh, Jamie Noble, one half of JJ Security, will be celebrating right. the birthday. And, um, uh, the legendary Great Muda will be celebrating a birthday. Uh, Muda turns 55 tomorrow. Muda's kind of young. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't know why I thought Muda was like older. I think that's who his contemporaries mm-hmm. were. I just, think, I just thought Muda was mm-hmm. older. But, yeah. So, that's it for that. Um, I'm going to drop some news on you from the wrestling world. And we'll talk about it. Um, word on the dirt sheets. Oh, well, I started. You know, I take it down. Um, we also lost a wrestler th- this week. Uh, legend is kind of stretching it, but I'll go with it. Tom Zeke uh, that this week. Uh, also known to some of you people as the Z Man. From WCW fame, uh, Tom Zink wrestled in just about every major promotion. Um, did about the same mid card fifty fifty, you know, with some lose some kind of guy. Um, you might remember him from his tag team with Flying Brian Pillman. Um, I'm going to say the most noble thing that Tom Zink had going for him. He was a member of the 1976 Robbinsdale, Minnesota High School uh, graduating class. Okay. Now, (laughs) 
for some of you, y'all like, well, what the hell does that matter? I graduated from Pontiac Central in 1994. No. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was not supposed to laugh that hard. Okay. I'm going about my business. But, well, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm 1976, sorry, Robbinsdale, Minnesota, graduated Tom Zink in the class of 1976. You know who his classmates were? Now, Tom Zink, like I said, had a law career as a professional wrestler, right? Right. So did a guy named Dean Peters, who was, be- Peters, who was better known as Brady Boone. And then two guys who were the Hall of Fame. Rick Rude graduated in that same high school graduate class. Ravsha Rick Rude. Mr. Perfect Mr. Perfect Kurt Hitting, Curtis Axel's daddy Graduated in that same class So four Big time major professional wrestlers Who wrestled for the major companies Two who became Hall of Famers From that same graduating right. class Right Now if you want to go 76 to 78 Because you want to stretch it out Um in 1977, the Barbarian graduated from that same high school. Also, in 1977, Nikita Koloff graduated from that high school. Also know the most people as Steve Simpson. Uh, yeah, Nikita was not really a Russian. Sorry. Um, <laughs> right. Which, that kind of happened back then, right? Like, you threw a white guy on a gimmick, and it was like, hey, man, we can just make him Russian. Yeah, it wasn't really a Russian. Right. Um, I could break your heart with a few other people who not really, like, where they from. I'm like this. Uh, the Ugandan giant, Kabbalah, who uh, has some health issues recently, and I hope Kabbalah's doing better. Uh, that's really James Sugar Bear Harris from Mississippi. Uh, so, yeah. Just the... Also, uh, 1978, same high school. Barry Darso graduated from that high school. Who was Barry Darso? The Repo Man. Uh, Barry Darso is Crusher Khrushchev, who, uh, yeah, also was not Russian. You know, I thought I think Barry was. I think when he Crusher was built as a Russian sympathizer and not an actual Russian. Uh, he ah, was understandable. I believe he was Smash in Demolition. Which him and Axe go around in face paint and talk shit uh, around the circuit. If you are a fan and show up at a fan fest somewhere. That's how that's going to work. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So, that if you want to know what makes that wrestling, high school wrestler, that, that high school, Vern Gagne went there. Legendary AWA founder, promoter, and world champ uh, and maybe that's why he buy a talent there but that high school like what single high school producing that much talent is probably the equivalent of not the equivalent but somewhere on par with the West Texas uh, state football team which at any given time had 18 different guys three former NWA world champions uh, Tully Blanchard was a quarterback Tito Santana Who's a Hall of Famer Was a tight end Ted DiBiase Played on that team Dusty Rhodes Played Down there Both Funk Brothers Played Bruiser Brody Stan Henson Like it goes crazy Like Somewhere on that That college football team It's like Hey man We could all just be wrestlers And say fuck this So Right That happened Um So we, we went there uh, We talked about Dean Ambrose being injured on Raw And he's had surgery He's going to be out for a while um, This thing says Orlando Jordan Underage boys Keish. Wait What? Per- yeah I'm, just, I'm reading the notes And uh, I have to watch how I write these notes Because uh, I don't What the hell Keith? Okay. Look. Look. All right. Right now, there's a story out. 
uh, about Orlando Jordan and his issue uh, with court underage boys and that has something that's been a long rumor since he's been old it's one of the things that got him they say push out of the WWE in 2006 and there was an incident with him and Flair in 2010 where they was at the bar and he had he had a little young boy there and the young boy was wilding out and acting kind of lewd and Flair had to roll up on him and be like look man we got executives here and you fucking up the buddy and uh right Orlando got mad and it got it went there. But uh, yeah, apparently uh, there's some you know stuff about him going around, and I just in today's society where everybody is uh, coming, getting they come to Jesus moment. Um, I guess maybe now people are going to hit Orlando Jordan like, "Hey man, you got to stop it." Uh, you know you can't you can't you can't be out here rolling up old like teenagers. You know, get you a grown up and live your life. Uh, so yeah, that happened. Um, could Vince McMahon bring back the XFL? I'm going to explore this. I'm going to explore this deeper, or kind of like sports, and on retailperessa dot com. I will write it out, but. Word on the street is that Vista sold a hundred million dollars of WWE stock. That hundred million gives him a cash flow, where they expect him to use it to do some things. They said he bought it for other entertainment ventures, like he he sold that that stock to they had that hundred mil for other entertainment ventures. I'm gonna say, I mean, I hope that's it, right? Like, I hope. There's other ventures and it's just some stuff he want to do, but could he bring back the XFL? Here's what I'm going to tell you. I don't think the XFL was that big of a failure the first time around. You know why I don't believe that? Because uh, 90 players from the roster from that one season all oh, they ended up on NFL rosters the next year. So that lets me know they were talented. That lets me know that people was watching them because they had a tape reel to see it. Uh, I, I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Uh, I know NBC, being the major network, was trying to get back into good graces of the NFL, screwed them over on the deal, on the TV deal. And I know right. And I know the NFL didn't want it to go down. But I don't know how this all works out years later and with content and what they want to do or how. It's possible, yes. Likely, I, I don't think it's likely. I mean, just because, you know, I think the, the workload and all that stuff, a lot of people were stressed out. Like, I don't, I don't know. All right. Uh, word on the street. Batista may want to come back and pursue a full time schedule. Um, say what? Yeah, that's what they say. I don't believe that he wants to pursue a full time schedule. Like, I can see him coming back and doing some spots, but uh, that dude actually, he ain't the rock, but he he started to make too much money acting. All right. Like, there's a movie I haven't even watched. Let, like, he got his own movie. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, what you and that Marvel stuff, man. Bruh. Uh, right. And I know the Avengers Infinity War is going down, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he uh I I don't think he coming back anytime soon. If he come back, he not coming back for anything big. I I don't think he coming back to do that, uh that full time schedule. That shit is too stressful. So That sounds too much yeah. for him. That sounds like way too much for him. Yeah. Like, I mean, well, because at this point, like, with everything he, I've seen him in movies. One of my favorite movies actually has him in it, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't even, like, advertised like that much. 
Um, it wasn't like a straight to DVD movie or nothing because it was a really good movie. But at the same time, like he has other projects going on other than the Marvel stuff. So it's not like he's not filming other shit. <laughs> like he's consistently acting. He's there. I, I mean, he's a wanted commodity considering his size, you know, and all that. And he ain't a bad actor. So it's like, you know, you can't have him on a full-time schedule. Unless, unless like, everything is going to go straight downhill for him. But it can't be because he has other Marvel films to, to film. Like, that's, you know, that's a continuous thing. So, um, he ain't going to be able to do that. And if he does do it, it's going to be for a severely short period of time. Yeah. We talking about two months, three months tops. You know what I'm saying? Like, he ain't going to be like that forever. He can, yeah, he can come do some spots and, you know, and all of that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that he can even be a part-timer. You know? Not entirely. Like, I can't see him pulling a Brock type of move. Because... I, his schedule is going to be too full. You know, that filming is going to take forever. So, he's going to be filming for months at a time. And that's just the Marvel stuff. Like, you can't... Nah, I don't, I don't see that happening. Yeah, so, yeah, me either. Um, going down the list, um... I don't really want to talk about nothing else. Uh, they said, <laughs> "What? I, 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 I don't. Keith. I, I'm looking." Keith made, Keith made the list, and he said, "I don't want to talk about that." Game. I don't want to talk about that. Like, well, okay. I'm good. Let's, um, let's throw this one down because this one, I think, is interesting, and it, it, it would be better for a next week topic, but it's already out, right? So, uh, all right. In the year of review, Rolling Stone has said The Miz is wrestler of the year. What? Yeah. Rolling Stone, legendary rock and roll magazine, Rolling Stone, named Miz, Miz their wrestler of the year uh, in a tweet put out on Wednesday. They posted an article explaining why Miz took their top spot. And of course, you know, Miz wouldn't let it go. Right, of course. He said, so does this get me to cover? Have your people call my people. Hashtag number one. Um, right now, Miz is off TV. He's filming some movies for the WWE, which, hey, man, how, how quick are these movies being made and these scripts? Because Miz be off TV for like a month and then, hey, he back. And he done had like two movies done. I know they up to like Marine 8. Uh... Not like eight, but like <laughs> it, it's like six. Hey, you close enough? You yeah, know, six. I, which we're, we're gonna bring back the movie reviews for Ring Time Pro Wrestling because we haven't done a movie review in like six months. So we're gonna bring back movie reviews. Uh, I started watching the Seth Rollins Wesley Snipes movie, but I never finished it. And hey, you know, I forgot that movie was actually made. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh. who the hell is that can get Seth Rollins and and uh, Wesley Snipes in the same damn movie? Hey man, WWE called Wesley Snipes. I'm surprised Wesley did not try to wrestle because Wesley oh, right. is very adamant that. But see, the problem is Wesley be trying to shoot. Wesley ain't gonna be out here trying to play. Wesley is out here on that like I know I can whoop your ass for real. Uh, like right. I, I, I know this like martial arts shit like I will you know what I mean Wesley who's a good follow on Twitter uh, fans come to him slick and he will uh, clap back hard and I think he's serious I've seen it I have seen it Just it like, was so, awful yeah. but people be coming at him real slick like it's like yo Y'all, y'all got some keyboard courage, cause I, I'm not fucking with Wesley Snipes. Okay. I'm sorry, like I'm not saying I think he's an expert martial artist, but I've seen enough movies where I like I believe he could do some of that shit. 
<laughs> and my face ain't about to find out which he can and cannot do. So, uh, yeah, no, that's okay. Right. Yeah, I'm not about that life. I'm good. Yeah, man. No, man. Everybody don't need good. to be a hero. Just right. saying. Everybody don't need exactly. to be a hero. Uh, Smackdown, Keish. Shobes up. Daniel Bryan, Shane McMahon, talking about class champions. Shane is, of course, pissed. Daniel Bryan had that fast count. Daniel Bryan explained to Shane, hey, I see where Roach going down. This 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 stuff is fucking you up. And before you turn into coming down, strutting and jiggling, calling about no chance at hell, um, <laughs> right. I need to fix that. And Shane seemed like he bought it. Keish. Word on the street. You know Daniel Bryan that passed some physicals and he might be all right. You know what I mean? Right. You know, I I I, I really don't need this to end with him wrestling Shade. Yeah, that's not okay. I'm not for that. Not at all. Not even a little bit. No, I mean, like, I'll, I, I don't get how. Or, you know... <laughs> I just got a feeling that that's where this may end up. Because somebody's no, going to... Okay. You know, they still try to be, you know, bros and stuff, but I feel like somebody's going to do something. Right. But, yeah, yeah. So, that happened. Uh, Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable defeated the Usos in a non-title match. Which was a pretty decent match. I mean, Keish, uh are they trying to see if somebody wants those belts or how is that working? Also, they doing the most. I still hate those belts. I hate the tag team titles on both shows. Like collectively, like this, it, they might be the worst <laughs> wrestling belts of all time. The designs for them are horrific. Like, I don't understand who did that well, shit. Like, they, that shit's horrible. They look like they are belts that people, uh, you know how WWE used to make the, they, they replica toy belts, and then there was like these yeah. like brand belts made by another company that wasn't like a real wrestling yeah. company that was just like wrestling belts kind of shit. That's what those look like. Mm-hmm. They really do. Awesome. They're horrible. Keisha, I was at Toys R Us the other day, right? You know, it's Christmas shopping. I'm looking for kids stuff. I'm getting my nephew something. You know what I mean? Da da da. Um, they got a WWE section at Toys R Us, and you know they have a little replica twenty dollar belt that they sell. You know what I mean, like the little generic kid belt. But then at the end of the aisle, Keish, they had like a belt for a hundred nineteen dollars. It was they only had the women's title, but. It was the raw women's title, Keish. And it was like real size. Right. I just didn't buy it because I was like, I, you know, I don't think Leah would dig it just yet. Like, I think she like she, I mean, she likes watching wrestling and stuff like that, but I don't, I don't think she's obsessed enough to have a belt yet. No, no, she ain't me. See, she's not yeah. she's not planning on having like a real life replica at her wedding. Like she yeah. at point yet. Right. You know. Like I think and it's funny, I tell people this they think they laugh at me. I'm not gonna get one of those that, that you can buy at the store. No, I'm I'm gonna go online to one of those, you know, belt replica stores. I'm gonna have me a real life replica. And it's gonna be on my waist when I get married. I'm just telling y'all. Like it's gonna, I'm gonna have a belt at the wedding, over the shoulder, and my husband gonna have one too. I ain't playing. Yeah. Like um, she ain't at that point yet. When she get to that point. Yeah, I I could I would invest. I'm uh, just I told her I was like, look, you know what reasons why I ain't bought a belt because I I don't want people trying to challenge me on the street because <laughs> it can get bad. Uh, Charlotte, uh, <laughs> just saying, because I feel like somebody—I I, I don't know why—I I, just—I feel like I'll be wearing somebody be like, "Look, man, you think you the champ, huh?" 
Come on, man. Let's let's go. Put your belt on the line. You know what I'm saying? Like just out the street. Put your belt on the line. <laughs> Make it some title man, nigga. Yeah. Come on, like, man. What? Like, you, you got friends? I mean, what the fuck? Who are you? Like, y'all niggas be doing shit in y'all backyard, don't y'all? Nah, I ain't fucking with you. Yeah, just nah, man. I mean, it'd be a nice thing to have. It'd be a nice thing to tote around to, you know, like we go to events or something like that. But, yeah, nah. Uh, Charlotte, you know, I was, I was going to start calling Charlotte Flair. You know, I've been calling Charlotte Flair because that's how she was introduced. But now she wants to be Charlotte Flair. So Charlotte Flair and Naomi uh, defeated Ruby Riot and Sarah Logan. Uh, I think this Naomi made her intentions that, hey, man. I want that strap. Right. But I do got your back. Uh, Dolph Ziggler had his celebration, which ended real weird. Uh, him leaving the U.S. title in the ring. Keisha's he done? <coughs> no. Um, personally, I don't think Dolph Ziggler is done. I think they're... Uh, I, right now, I think there might be a conflict on what to do with his character and I think he might be a little but I think this is just an angle they're going with I mean think about the direction they were going with him in the first place he comes out there he's you know, he's imitating other wrestlers and their interests and making a mockery out of everybody saying like you know oh you come out to please the crowd and you just that and the third I mean look how he came out for Clash of the Champions his music started the music was cut and all the lights was cut and then he just walked out you know he didn't do his usual ring entrance or none of that so I think what's happening is this is just a part of what they um it's a part of the story that they have decided to go in the direction they decided to go in with his character in the first place I don't think he's finished um I just think that this is uh a part of whatever crazy storyline they decided to put him in um cause I, I haven't I don't know if you have Keith but I haven't heard any rumors about like his contract ending and him being done and you know none of that kind of stuff so um and I'm, of course not everything you hear just because you haven't heard it doesn't mean it's not happening but at the same time like um at, at these days that's normally the case so um I don't think he's finished at all. I just think that this is just a part of whatever they got going on. And um, within the next couple of weeks or coming weeks, we'll see it develop into whatever it's supposed to be. So. Okay. I mean, fair. I think there's a good opportunity there. Um, I'm not sure what they're doing with Dolph, but we'll check it out. Uh, the New Day defeated Rusev and Ada English, uh, getting some revenge from last week. Uh, the show ends with AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Randy Orton defeating Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Jinder Mahal. Um, it was a nice six man tag. Um, I thought it had levels because AJ had issues with all the heels, and as had, had the baby, the both of the baby faces want that a shot at that title. Uh, mm-hmm. Gender lost to AJ, cheated Nakamura, cheated Randy Orton. So he works in the match. Uh, Kevin has his issues with everybody, and so does Sammy. Well, Sammy don't really have any AJ Styles issues, but uh, it's just nice to see everybody around. Right. And, uh, you know, it was a decent match for what it was worth. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's it for this week. Uh, Keish, anything you want to throw in there, add or? Um, I want to wish everybody um, that's celebrating Christmas out there Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Holidays to everyone. People, y'all be safe out here this weekend. Don't do nothing I wouldn't do. Um, hell, I, I don't do nothing I would do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's more about it. Like, just, just don't, 
<laughs> don't do the shit I would do because that I, that's probably more dangerous than not. Um, I won't be at work Christmas Eve, Christmas Christmas Day, and and a few days. Actually, I'm working all next week. So, um, because my off days are changing the next week, the week after that. So, um, right now they're Friday and Saturday next week. They're um, I'll be working Friday and Saturday because of the change in the Sunday and Monday. So, yeah. Uh, next week is going to be a rough one, but I'm going to get through it. And I hope everybody enjoys their off days. And if you out, um, um, if your business is out over the holiday, I don't care. Whatever, you know. Yeah, I'm jealous. I don't. I don't give a shit. It, it is what it is, though. So you know, y'all have fun out there. Tell him why you bad, son. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna go make this holiday pay. Y'all enjoy. Um, it is what it is. So, um, thank y'all for listening to the show. Of course, we love y'all listening every week, and we we do this for us and you too. Like, it, let's just be honest about this, because. I mean, let's just be real. I'm going to be real. Like, we do this for all of y'all and ourselves. So, yeah. Um, Keith, I think that's all I got. You know, uh, that's that's pretty much it. I do this for the culture. Um, <laughs> no. Um, thank y'all for listening. Uh, we appreciate y'all coming out. Uh, enjoy your holidays, whichever holidays you s- subscribe to. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Christmas uh, Festivus For the rest of us um, Whatever you However you kick it man uh, Just love your family Appreciate them Hug them um, And That's it man We out uh, We will be back next week With our year in review we'll work, So we'll be breaking it down We'll give you our top wrestlers. We'll give you our top matches. We will tell you what to expect for 2018, probably, in the wrestling world. Uh, And also with news, top stories that happened this year. Everything will be a good recap. Uh, A lot of podcasts are taking time off right now. Uh, They are on a holiday break. and They're doing a lot of different stuff. We are still kicking full gear. Download, get familiar, share with some friends. Uh, this is a good companion on a road trip. Uh, we could kill some time for you. So, uh, like I said, we'll be back next week. And uh, this is the heated time of the calendar. And we're ready to rock and roll. So, I think the best content show that you're going to get right here. So, stay tuned. Peace. That's right. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye.